And we are live. So it's still a few minutes before 9 o'clock at least, at least here in the Philippines. And um, while we're waiting, let me just enjoy my coffee. <laughs> How are you all doing, everyone? Thank you for joining me. And today I will be discussing something really... Hmm, well, everything that I say is important. I'm kidding. No, this 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 time it's a little bit uh, important and very applicable to almost everybody. Um, and even if you're not, if you, even if you don't have a dog, whether you have a cat or you have um, uh, a goldfish or um, other animals, some some people here in Manila have squirrels. Some people have cats, some people have both, dogs and cats. And um, this, the topic that we have for today is applicable to you, especially if you're, if you're not just the kind of person who have dogs and are really happy being around them and just passively existing uh, with you, then I really encourage you to stick around and listen. So, one more minute before I start. Woo. Now this coffee is hot. Hazel Howe is here. Hi Hazel. I will see you soon, Doc. You have to remove my cyst. I, I hate it. So while, while we're waiting, um, I'm inviting you to uh, get, your, get your pen and paper if you want to list things down. I will be posting this video anyway on my YouTube and on uh, my website. So if you can't make it or you can't finish it, then maybe you can also just check out the website in a few days and it's it's gonna be there it's at bradfeliciano.com so that's my personal website and i also write some blogs there <laughs> okay so it's nine o'clock let's start um so today's topic is advanced training and how to level up your basics and for me what let's just let's let's state what the meaning of advanced is for me which is highly debatable to everyone okay for me, advanced is, especially when in, uh, we're talking about training or dog training, uh, for me, advanced is the strength of the behavior. doesn't matter if it's a fancy behavior or a basic sit. And the reliability of um, the behavior that you asked for. Okay, so those are two things that makes an advanced uh, level for me, the um, the reliability and the strength. Okay, so I'm gonna, I will be discussing and I will be dissecting those two later. Uh, but again, I will be sharing with you the things that um, worked for me, and if you have other ideas, hi P. So if you have other ideas, uh, please comment below so everybody can see it. Please throw me some questions because after all, this is a Q&A Friday <laughs> and you are free to join the discussion. Okay, so, okay, so as I have been um, discussing, uh, advanced for me is any behavior that is strong and that is reliable. Um, reliable and strength is up to you and it's up to how much you have trained your dog in the past and the situation that you're in honestly literally you cannot train in almost all situations that you will be meeting in your life together with your dog you can train the basics such as crossing the streets, traffic, um, 
what if you go to the States and there's snow in Michigan? You can't train for that here. You can't ask for you know, a, a quick sit when you guys are standing in the snow, especially if you, 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 you and your dog came, uh, came from a tropical country. That's, um, that's a little bit difficult. So let's choose our battles. <laughs> Let's try to be realistic, and but what I mean by um, choosing your battles is uh, pick out the situations first that you get to experience every day. Walking your dogs, um, feeding them, going out of the door if they need a sit-stay, then do that. So... Those are some of the factors that I will be discussing later on and how you can get to your meaning of advanced or your level of advanced. Okay, so um, advanced training and how to get there. I have a few tips that I want to share with you. One is, first let me get my notebook because it's, it's here. Um, it doesn't matter how fancy the behavior is. I want to start with something as simple as sit. Uh, it could be a touch exercise. That's one of my favorites because it's easy and very uh, specific. When I say touch, I mean I want your nose touching my hand. Okay? With no treats there. Um, it's very obvious. Every time you try to offer your hand, Dogs will naturally gravitate to it and probably sniff it and that's what I reward them for. So ever since they were puppies, I've always started with uh, the touch because you can use the touch exercise uh, to train them with almost anything later on. So if you have a good touch exercise as a foundation, then you can teach them anything later on. It's a good start. And the second one that I love teaching whenever they're puppies uh, is a down. Uh, it's very difficult for a lot of, especially my dogs, to go into a down because it's a submissive position. And they're scared dogs. And scared dogs, at least from my experience, again, it's highly debatable depending on your experience. Um, scared dogs, from my experience, they're having a hard time going into a down because they always feel the need to jump up and you know just defend themselves so start with a simple behavior that you have been practicing at home that you think is already mm, accurate and strong and how do you measure that I like things that are measurable so let me share with you um, if if you have a behavior and you can ask your dog to perform a specific behavior and he performs it eight out of ten times then I think that's a good start okay so do that um, at least for my dogs it's a down start with a very simple behavior. it could be a sit for you it doesn't matter it could just be a touch exercise like, like what I've said earlier so uh, choose that and then try to incorporate some inconsistencies in the environment okay. now you're starting to diversify the situation okay so if you if you're you and your dog have gotten used to just training your your behaviors inside the house in a room that's so comfortable air conditioned uh, and no distraction which i highly encourage you to do especially if you have puppies and new dogs green dogs you know those dogs that haven't had training before so it's easier for them to concentrate and absorb whatever you're trying to teach them so start with that now the next tip that i always want to encourage my students to do that i practice is literally bring the behavior out of that room you will have to practice the same things in an environment that is not common to them uh, outdoors most of the time you in the country where i'm in if you're not from the philippines let me just tell you 
most of because also it's hot most of the time we just bring our dogs out to potty and then bring them in uh, there are a lot of people however that will go above and beyond by waking up really early and walking their dogs for a really long time to tie them out which is also amazing um, to to skip the heat during the day uh, so yeah props to them props to both of them we try to make uh, do of what we have in terms of time and other resources uh, but there will be there will be a lot of instances that you will have to ask the basic behaviors you've taught inside your very comfortable house outside while you're walking them or making them pot okay let we will just stick with the behavior sit sit is one of those very easy exercises for a lot of people to teach their dogs and it's very instantly gratifying for both dogs and humans and i think it's one of those behaviors that you can stick with for a really long time without teaching them any fancy uh, behaviors that will also be very practical for you in real life and i always tell my students i don't care if your dogs only know sit if it's a good quality sit then your sit save saves lives Okay, um, or a down. It doesn't matter as long as um, you have a very strong one good quality behavior that you can ask your dog in almost any situation. So do that. For most people, they'd come to me and ask me, like, Brad, he knows sit inside the house so fucking well. Every time we go out the door, it's just, there's nothing. It's like he doesn't hear me. He doesn't respond to me. He just keeps sniffing the floor. Well, congratulations. You have a very normal dog. <coughs> it only means it's too much too soon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, what I need you to do, what I want to share with you is to please be conservative whenever you start bringing that behavior out and attempting to train your dog uh, to do those behaviors in a different environment uh, you want to be very conservative that the dog may not be able to perceive the difference from the comfortable room to the outdoors let me say that again you have to be very conservative a transition that your dogs will not feel that you're slowly working that behavior going out in real life if your dogs cannot perform a sit for you willingly happily outside then might as well try training on your way out of the door. There's so many other factors um, that will affect their behavior, the, uh, the, the focus that they have for you. One novelty, they hardly go out. There's hardly anything inside the room that will make them interested other than you. Outside, there's the scent of everything. There's the heat. There's, there are other dogs, cats, too much, okay? Um, also, if they're edgy, if you have not given them physical exercise prior to uh, asking them to do a behavior you thought and thought was perfect already inside the house. So the first thing is to pick a behavior that you think is very easy for you, both of you and your dog to do inside the house. And then, try to transition it outside as slowly as you can. If your dog can't perform, then try moving closer to the door. See if the dog can even look at you. If the dog can look at you, great. 
try asking for a sit. If you're successful, then great. Jackpot that shit. Hi, Dan. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you tuned in. I was expecting your sister to tune in but anyway. <laughs> Hi to the baby. So anyway, yeah. Um, try to see if that, that, that your dog will respond. And if he does, jackpot the shit out of him with amazing treats. Still not responding to uh, your treats? Try something higher value. This is why in the poll, I've always asked people, which one do you want me to um, discuss first? Advanced training or, you know, the complexity of treats because they are correlated. And by treats, I mean rewards, not just the food treats that you give your dogs. I mean, you know, experience is a reward. Positive experience, especially, is a reward. Um, Privilege is a reward. Sitting beside you, if they like it, it's a reward. And how you can utilize that. Okay. Yeah, so the second one is try to move closer to the door where they anticipate that you're going out. See if your treats are high value. And it's easy if they choose the treats as basic, okay? There are many other factors that should be considered um, to know if your treats are high value or not. But if they choose to focus on you and whatever reward you're doing, then I cheese, then you have a high value treat. Use that. Okay? Now, if you're successful at asking your dog to sit by the door, then try opening the door. If it's too much that the dog tries to rush out, then come back in. Take several steps back and make it easier. And again, start transitioning even slower than the previous uh, attempt that you did. Again, what you're trying to do here is to make the transition so slow that they can hardly perceive it. Move back, give distance. The farther away they are from the door, the easier they can concentrate on you, at least from my experience. Ask for someone to help you. Try, uh, try to ask someone to open the door. Um, for about an inch or two. If your dog can focus back to you and gives you a sit, then again, you fucking reward that dog with the best treats that you have. Then if your dog can't focus on you because the door's open, try just doing, try asking your assistant to just Make the doorknob sound. Turn the doorknob, let go, it makes a sound. If they focus back to you, reward the shit out of them. Jackpot. Make it seem like it's the greatest thing they've ever done. Looking at you sitting 10 feet away from the door when the doorknob made a sound. Because that normally triggers at least my dog. <gasps> hey, we're going out. It's gonna be so much fun. Especially your dogs that are so if you have dogs that are so excited to go out then that's that's a little too exciting for them okay so that's my second tip the third tip is well very similar to the first uh, the second tip is not to cross the threshold and i always tell this to my students because they go too far too soon too much too soon and that's where they fail the dogs don't fail they fail because their judgment is not as accurate as some professionals uh, have and this is what i'm here for i am 
I'm giving you tips of what worked for me that improved my judgment working with specifically my dogs. And not all dogs are the same, but I can tell you there's no, there's nothing wrong. There will be no harm in being very conservative when you're training your dog. Whenever you can try, whenever you want to try to push the limits, ask yourself, are you willing to bet $200? That's like 10,000 pesos. That your dogs will perform the behavior that you want in a specific scenario that that you're training him in try to ask yourself that if you can't if you can't answer a, a yes then make several steps <laughs> i always want you to win the situation you because you winning the situation your dog wins as well and he feels great you feel great both of you will have a great time training with with each other okay so do not cross the threshold literally a threshold is that if you open the door, most doors have this line that crosses your path by the frame that is a threshold okay don't cross that literally that is the threshold figuratively the threshold is your learner's limit, your learner's absolute capacity of what they can take in. Do not cross that. Keep pushing the threshold, but never be too bold that you will take risks. You're gonna cross that threshold because you feel like he can do it anyway. Oh, I have really good treats. Oh, you know, it's it's only a few cars. I can put him off leash. Like, no. If you cannot bet $200 that your dog can, don't do it. Okay? Be very conservative, especially. They cannot, they cannot talk back. And they cannot reason out to you. And you will get frustrated. They'll get frustrated. And you are doing more harm than good. I would rather be very um, conservative because if I commit a mistake that ends up scaring my dog to shifts, then there's no way I can verbally explain to my dogs that, sorry, I fucked up. Let's do it again. No. You will end up having to rehabilitate that behavior you asked for and it's not going to be as strong as if you did not accidentally scare your dog in doing so. Let's go back to the sit. You think your sit, their sit is so strong that you can ask it in any random time of the day. Fireworks happens and you ask your dog to sit, he cannot sit because he just needs to cower away from you. The next thing you know, you've poisoned the cue. And that's a very technical term. It means you just made him hate the sit because just when he cannot function healthily, emotionally, that's when you try to keep asking him to sit. That frustrated you, that frustrates your dog as well. So the next time you ask for the sit, he'll be like, mm, I'm doubting that sit. I don't think I'm going to get something good out of it. Remember, it's not just about asking the behavior to happen. It's about making your kids, your dogs, feel good about doing it as well. Quote me on that. <laughs> so... Um, let me check my notes again. So again, first three, choose a simple behavior. Two, bring it out. 
And when you bring it out, make the transition very slow that they will hardly perceive it. Number three, take your time. Okay? It's not just because it's too easy. It doesn't mean you need to expect them to do it immediately. I don't see anything wrong with okay there's a new environment it's noisy outside it's a little bit warm in terms of environment temperature I ask my dog to sit and he's showing signs that he just might sit take your time don't scold him don't repeat your words wait for him to sit if he doesn't sit then maybe you can guide him. You can lure him into a sit. Make him see that it's worth um, listening to your cues, uh, performing the behaviors that you ask them for. This is why I always, personally, I always start with capturing. Capturing is when you just wait for them to offer a behavior. It means they can cancel everything out in the environment and just focus on you and what you have for them uh, in that situation and they're willing to work for it. if you notice in my training vlogs I hardly say anything I hardly say anything very minimal cues and it's very boring and the reason why it's very boring to watch me train my dogs and the reason the only reason why I keep talking is because I'm hosting and I'm teaching you what I'm currently doing in my training vlogs uh, especially on my Facebook live Saturday mornings, which will happen tomorrow, by the way. Um, same time, 9, 9 a.m. If there's hardly any commands that I tell my dog, uh, that immediately tells me that the environment is comfortable enough for them to focus on me. If you put them in a different environment, that's too much too soon. The fourth tip, is it the fourth? Yes, the fourth tip is for me to yield a little. Okay? Don't keep imposing on your dogs to do what you want. Again, yield a little, lower your fucking standards. <laughs> Perfectionism has no place in dog training while you're training it's very frustrating that a lot of people think that they need to do things perfectly i'm only talking about training dogs okay on the first fucking session just when they've experienced this environment for the first time just when they they're experiencing this new environment that is borderline punishing for them my my firstborn ala hates sitting on grass we don't have a garden that has grass i've never trained him that much at least to sit for a very long time on grass and we never practiced it if I keep pushing him on the first session every time we go to a grassy place um, in my dad's restaurant doing man <laughs> in the garden then I am a failure as a trainer and I am a failure as his parent a failure as a human the training session will not be fun I'm not teaching him anything other than to just obey me out of fear it will be very frustrating for me because I just keep making things so perfect from the very beginning we try to act like we're perfectionists really but you know it's just the image that you want oh I want people to think that I'm a perfectionist. Well, fuck that. You're gonna die anyway. So why be perfect today? <laughs> Quote me on that too. <laughs> mm. So yeah, 
relax. Relax your standards. Because after all, your dogs have been relaxing their high standards whenever they're dealing with you. <laughs> you don't quite make it to their standards. They're just trying their best to... Um, they're just trying their best to be around you because they don't have any other choice. <laughs> okay, start with a simple behavior. Bring it out. Be mindful of the threshold and take your time. Just when you see improvements, it doesn't mean you need to keep pushing it. If your dogs have improved and have been performing in an environment they have never performed in, especially confidently, then don't add in another factor. I remember when I was training for the musical and my dog just gotten used to being on that black rubber floor. So at first he felt so weird that he's stepping on the black floor that he probably couldn't see because at that time he's already having cataracts. Um, couldn't see and there were no lights. So a week later, he's gotten so confident about walking on it. And then two days later, they changed the floor. It was, they changed it to a wooden plywood floor that was made to look like parquet. Number one, that floor, again, he's not used to it. And it, there's so many lines. He doesn't like stepping on lines. He probably got it from me. Doesn't like stepping on lines. And again, that is my version of, um, just when you've achieved something, an improvement, then you're gonna have to push it again uh, further in terms of complexity and degree. Too much too soon. It was out of my hand. So I just had to retrain him again as fast as I can without imposing too much on him. And because we are on a deadline. I took extra hours just slowly exposing him there passively, giving him food. If he eats, great. And then I move him out again, bringing him back he there, stays for two minutes, steps on one line, reward the shit out of him. You don't have a deadline. Take your fucking time. Don't be too fucking excited adding more factors to improve your dog's behavior when you're training take your time you're not in a hurry especially if you're not a professional trainer even professional trainers that are doing positive reinforcement uh, I have not encountered someone that will tell you hey you have to step it up you have to turn it up three notches because that's just as good as forcing your dog to perform in a new environment that they're not used to. And then everything falls apart. Um, so that was fourth or fifth. Lastly, what I want to share with you is you have to practice. Once you have achieved that level that you have been thriving for and training for and you've achieved it in a positive way, your dogs love it, your dogs are performing outside, your, your, your expectations are met, his expectations are met, then keep practicing. The killer the killer for dog training in dog training is complacency. I cannot imagine 
how many people have uh, come up to me and say, my dog already knows that. Oh yeah, I can show you. Sure, show me. And then, that's it. How many times have I asked, have I seen other people putting their dogs off leash, expecting that their dogs will just stick around? Mm -mm. Not in a garden, not in a restaurant, not where there are other people and other dogs that they have not met and seen before and have exposed to in an environment they've never been exposed to with a lot of stimulus. They're not gonna stick. But Brad, Brad, he follows me around like a shadow. Well, not here. <laughs> Newsflash, you're not the most important thing to your dog. Your dogs will not do everything just because you said so. That's a stupid, egoistic mentality. Do not be complacent. Again, when you, when you think you're, you have already achieved the level that you want, and you have, let's say you already have, then keep practicing that shit. Because if you don't, you're gonna lose it. I always tell this story to my students. So my mom was a pianist and she was very confident and she doesn't have a piano anymore to practice on. She only remembers the theory behind it. She lost the skill. She can play it in, their, in her head, sure, but she's no longer capable of doing it as fast as she wanted it, as fluent as she wanted it, it frustrated her. Training your dogs is just like performing in theater, performing in a sport. Athletes, like swimmers, do the same kind of swim stroke over and over and over for like years. And then they compete in Olympics only every four years. They don't even win. Only three, only one person wins the gold. Uh, but they do practice and they're not complacent. And they will keep on doing things over and over even if it's boring because that's what maintains the behavior the only difference between basic and advanced is the strength of the behavior a sit is a sit it could be as easy as okay when i when i say sit at least very least put your butt on the floor that's a sip then you start adding more factors that will that might disturb your dogs from sitting or holding a sip I want you to sit while I open the door I want you to sit while you can hear subtle fireworks from a really far place so those are the factors the sit didn't change hold hold that position put your butt on the floor but you're adding more factors in his environment that can potentially make him stand or not do the behavior to begin with so those are the only dif that's the only difference between basic and advanced it's the same behavior and I might butcher this, Ken Ramirez, the director in Karen Pryor Academy where I studied, he says in his book that the basic, no, advanced, see I already butchered it, advanced are the basics done well. And by well, I'm assuming that, you know, you add all these factors carefully, conservatively, uh, that your dogs will later on be immune of and can perform the behavior despite the presence of the factors that you started to uh, uh, 
introduce them uh, with. So that's the only difference. I want to talk about, so those are my five tips on how to take your basic skills and level it up to advance. So another meaning for me, and how do you know if your level is basic or advanced? then that is totally up to you. I think, in my practice, I really think that wherever you are in your training, that's your basic. And I think that there's no limit to where you want to bring it, aka advance. Let me say that again. Wherever you are in your training, that's now the basic. And what you're aiming for is the advance. Once you reach your advanced level or whatever standard you are trying to thrive for, train for, then that becomes the basic. Because there's no limit to how strong you want this behavior to be in the future. You don't, there's no limit on how, there's a nice bird trying to pluck my plants. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, I got distracted. So, um, there's no level, there's no limit to what you, to how strong you want to train your dogs to be in terms of their behavior. So, when you reach that point, then that becomes your baseline. That becomes heart, eyes, Ilvana. Um, that becomes your baseline. That becomes your basic. And then you're gonna look, and if you're happy with that basic, then by all means, stick with it and fucking practice. That's a last tip, remember? Stick with it. Uh, keep practicing over and over and over again. Then, if you're bored with it, then try to again inject some factors that can potentially uh, bother your dog's behavior. And review your standards again do the do the five tips on bringing your basic to um, advance and weaknesses and strength of a behavior let me get my cheap notebook again okay um, the weaknesses of a behavior so we're done with the five things that I wanted to share with you in terms of leveling up your basic uh, training so what makes what makes a behavior weak not heavily rewarded or not rewarded at all if there's a behavior that's not rewarded, then I don't think there's a very high possibility that the behavior will be performed when you ask it. So that's one. Number two, practice. Even if calculate ka ulit. Even if you have rewarded this dog using jackpots and really high value and just practice once a week, then the behavior will still be weak. Um, so be mindful of that. Uh, what makes it weak, again, is diversity. If you have not successfully trained your dog to do a behavior in different places and scenarios, then don't expect your dogs to be performing just as good as how they perform in the training area that they've gotten used to. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what behavior. It could be a sit. It could be a simple sit. Or it could be as complex as a high five that you've successfully taught your dog. KQ, if you're listening, if you're there, I know you're there. 
it's the high five. How to bring that sit or the high five to the next level is really up to you. So consider those factors. Are, is your dog motivated enough? Have you practiced enough? Have you rewarded the dog enough that it sticks to his brain, sticks to his body that later on becomes involuntary almost? That when you say sit, bam, without even thinking, they give you that fucking sit really fast with enthusiasm and very um yeah enthusiastic excited so that's how you'll know you'll know if you've been living with your dogs for a long time you'll know how they look if they're enthusiastic about something so those are my tips on knowing if your behavior the behavior you're trying to teach your dog is uh, weak or strong another thing if you keep asking if you keep telling them the cue then it's kind of weak again cue is probably my my favorite topic cues are so important and by cues otherwise known as commands then Hi, Dennis. Then, it's when you keep asking the dog to do things, whether verbally or visually, and they can't perceive it, at least in that situation, or choosing not to perceive it, choosing not to perform the behavior because they feel threatened. They feel like their lives are in danger. That makes a weak behavior. Last is the fifth is the poison cue and what I mean by the poison cue is if they started becoming fearful of the cue or the command that you previously taught them again go back to sit if you ask them to sit inside the house very comfortable and they enthusiastically respond to it by putting their butts on the floor then that's great they like the cue, they understand it, they get rewarded for it, excellent. And then there are fireworks going off. And then you keep forcing them to sit, kept telling them to sit, shouted at them with the word sit. Then maybe later on they'll get scared because once you ask them to sit, they'll remember, oh, they will remember. They will remember the aversive feeling that they had the last time that you asked them to sit forcefully, violently, aggressively. So those are the five things to know whether the behavior is strong or not. So that's how you advance from the basics. And don't be shy if you come up to me and say, hey, um, my dog only knows sit. Hey, my dog only knows the basics. I don't care. You can take your basics and level it up to un unlimited uh, heights. And that's totally up to you. And if by basic you only mean sit, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with teaching your dog just sit again i always tell my students sit saves lives if your dogs have really good sit and they try to walk away from you don't even call them to come back like my dogs i ask them down if in your case ask them to sit it's my job i took the responsibility of me going to my dog picking him up especially if they've accidentally crossed the street Okay. It's never happened, but I can ask them to go into a down from a distance because I'd rather pick them up than to call them back to me running and that's when they get hit by a car. Could be a sit, could be a down, doesn't matter. Again, if your dog only knows how to sit but they can sit by the door, even if there are other dogs passing by, by the gate, then that's a great quality sit. They can hold the sit for a long time that's great 
if your dogs can only sit but can sit for 60 seconds while fireworks are going off that's amazing that's fucking amazing keep it up keep training for that if you've reached that level of strength in your dog sit tangina keep practicing it's just gonna be so difficult practicing it because there's no real fireworks anytime you are prepared to train your dogs um, there are always other ways like playing playing a YouTube video of fireworks some dogs can perceive it to be fake or recorded some dogs don't uh, puppies definitely may not know the difference between the real fireworks and the fireworks that's coming off of your uh, speakers okay again be very conservative the next will be uh, yeah sit whenever you're carrying something and the dog doesn't know how to heal and if he knows really good sit you know what sit I'll bring this to the table go back to you put you on leash and then we can walk nicely do not be shy going, coming up to me and say, Brad, my dog only knows how to sit. That's excellent. Let's make it better. There's always room for improvement. Uh, there's always room. And it, you will always have to change your ways of training because even if you've gotten to a point where you're so happy about the quality of the behavior that you can ask from your dog, age happens. They, they're getting old. My dogs are getting old. body gets weaker by the day because they're aging and you will have to again adjust that standard that you have because their bodies have gotten weaker during the years um, what else injury can happen i got kaya uh, already with you know in an inborn defect he has a laxating patella and that's why he cannot hold a sit for a really long time. He needs to slide. And every time he walks, he walks. His hind legs walk this way. And it looks funny, and I had to strengthen it with swimming. I'm glad that he's just a small dog, so I just have to put him in a tub, and then he swims. So, and then Kahati that I got with a broken hind leg that's been operated, but is now very successful at doing agility. And even with him, he's the one that taught me the most to be very conservative physically when I'm training the dogs. Alab is the one that taught me to be very conservative in introducing distractions because they all get scared easily. I have scaredy dogs. Growing up, I, I have scaredy dogs because that's the dogs that we picked up from the streets. They're Ascals. They're Aspins. I don't mind if you call them Ascals. I do. Um, Aspins, Ascals. They're their survival instinct is to be fearful and that's a big part of uh, their life and that's the reason why they survive so I'm so used to dogs growing up with fear and they react differently so I became so as a professional whether I see a confident dog or not I'm still very very conservative especially when I am introducing distractions or transitioning to different places diverse locations um, and triggers especially triggers especially when i'm dealing with dogs with some behavior issues and hi ty thanks for joining i'm about to finish this video so that's how i can, that those are the things that I can share with you on how I, I Ryan, <laughs> personally improved my dog's basic to advanced. And now that they've reached the level of advanced that I was training for, now it became the basic. So it's time to level it up again if I want to. Every day I keep leveling it up because I don't encounter the same thing every day you don't. Um, it's 
getting a lot hotter these days. It's harder for me to walk them nicely on leash. They keep pulling to the shade. So I try to wake up really early so they don't have to keep walking under the sun. And another problem arises because Alab has cataract and at night time, it's a lot harder for him to see. So again, I have to level up his heel because now there's a different fact, there's a biological factor that affects the quality of the behavior that uh, I can ask from him. So these tips are highly applicable to almost any dog, any learner, and any level that you're in. So if you're a professional, so if you're a savvy, and for me, a, sa a training savvy is almost a professional. It's just that they have day jobs. And they don't want to quit their day jobs. And, but they're really good at training and they understand uh, behavior so well. Don't think that there's no room for um, you and your dogs to improve. And... Thanks, Cheese. So, uh, you're welcome. And thank you as well, Cheese. So, yeah. Um, again, if you're a professional, beginner, or a savvy, then this is still applicable to you. You have room for improvements. Your dogs have room for improvements. And once you get to that, again, level of training that you're aiming for, the advanced training that you've been dreaming of, then that becomes your basic. That becomes your baseline that you can later on choose to improve again, but that is totally up to you. Um, any discipline, it could be obedience, it could be agility, it could be, you know, just being an amazing companion with you uh, they don't need to win medals they don't need to win awards they don't need to have titles they just need to be themselves and be adjusted to the human lifestyle and the human language that we've been trying to teach them mm. so I would like to say thank you for listening I'm not gonna end just yet because I have five minutes and if you have questions please write them down on the comment section or here while we're still on and I'd love to read your questions suggestions or uh, just fucking comment I don't care uh, please please stick around because you are in for a treat. <laughs> I will leave this lecture or Q&A for 24 hours after this when I end this video. So you're gonna have 24 hours to review what I've been blabbing about and that hopefully will add value to you in your relationship with your dog and your training. So if you have questions, just write them down below. Give me a high, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. Yay, ha ha ha. Oh, now you're saying it. KQ, I'm calling you out. You're not busy. You have time. Why didn't you wake up early, girl? This is for you. You requested this shit. My friend KQ, she's one of the best yoga, specifically Ashtanga teachers here in the Philippines. I will argue that she is the best teacher. Both she can do everything that she's trying to teach and she teaches the humans so well and that's what makes her a really good teacher in yoga. And I think that's what the quality of a teacher that I'm looking for whether you're teaching yoga or just a dog trainer the ability to deliver and to teach. I have 17 seconds remaining. Ooh. 
Oh, and they have Italian goods for sale. I have five seconds remaining. I will see you again soon. Thank you so much, and I'll see you.